Hi, I'm Chris, 47 Club Runner, and I hope you're doing well. It's been a while, so where have I been? Well, first thing, I want to thank you guys for the community post that I did, um, your support and your kind words. Um, for those of you who hadn't read it, I just needed a bit of time off. I think sometimes people, you know, people, myself, struggle mentally, physically. I just needed a bit of time to kind of just recharge um, because I was just struggling, whether it be, um, you know, personal stress, um, running injury, uh, and just a knock on of all them effects or thinking that I've got some sort of bug because running isn't going as well as I thought it should be. So I took a bit of time off, uh, finally bit the, bit the bullet again. I went to see my chiropractor. Because as you know, I've been struggling recently with um, a hamstring injury that I picked up way back in May. Saw the chiropractor, fixed it, but it's kind of come back again. So tried to sort it myself, save myself some pennies as we all do, um, but didn't manage to, to, to kind of sort it. Fingers crossed, I think he sorted the problem. He said, hopefully I should be back running tomorrow. So initially my hamstring has been becoming tight due to, um, I was told, a tight left glue. And maybe that was the injury, injury originally, um, but he seemed to know straight away. He you know, had a little kind of feel around, so to speak. And he said that I've got a hamstring bursa. Um, I don't know the ins and outs because I'm not a specialist, so I just try and keep it as basic as I can. The hamstring, he said, has got three um, tendons that attach to the muscle um, at the bottom of your butt, say, uh, that attach into the bone. And there's a, a sac and basically it caused a bursa, which basically means that um, a fluid build up that needed to be released. And the reason for this is because my hamstring had become overly tight um, from lack of flexibility and the, the bursa had formed to obviously protect that area. So he manipulated it, done some stretching and over the half hour, you could see that the muscle was obviously becoming more relaxed because when I was doing the kind of 90 degree kind of extending the leg back and forwards, it was shaking at certain points. And when he'd finished, obviously that stopped. So he's given me some uh, exercises to do to activate the glute and to strengthen um, that area as well. He seems to think it's more to do with kind of the hip and hip flexors and all around the area that I just need to become a little bit more flexible. So he's given me two exercises to work on. First one on the floor, which is a bridge exercise. And basically just lie on your back, your knees, where well, your legs are going to be at 90 degrees once we raise up the kind of bridge. And you've got basically just tense or tighten the glutes inwards and go as high as you can. You will feel a slight strain across the back. And you can do this um, sets of three times 15 and just hold it for around about five seconds each one. So I'll show you what I mean. So we pull it up. Tighten your glutes inwards and then pull it up. So you feel a slight strain across here and then just hold that for kind of five seconds and then back down again. And then you're going to do that again. Hold that for five seconds and then back down again. And just do kind of start off with one set of 15. See how it goes, but kind of building up to kind of three sets. And then the other exercise, we're just going to concentrate just on one side. Because it's a pigeon stretch, but you're actually going to do it on, on the side to make sure we're getting the right angle. So whether it be a, a table, side of the chair. And what you're going to do is you're going to put this so it's nice and flat, and then you're going to lean forward. So if you're on a table, you should just be able to touch it. You don't want to be stretching too far forward until it's a bit stronger. And you should be feeling this, the kind of stretch here. And as I say, you want to do that after the run. And this is going to kind of free up this area and stop you from having that tight hamstring. So as I mentioned, you're going to be doing the pigeon stretch on just one side. And the reason you're doing that is because at the moment you have got an imbalance in your flexibility. So just work on that one side. If you can go a few weeks without any kind of niggles, then it just means that you can incorporate that stretch on both sides. Just so you can kind of minimize the risk of it happening again. You know, it's not going to make you bulletproof, but at least if you can incorporate that in your kind of daily, weekly routine from, you know, strengthening exercises to incorporate the plank, 
and also when you come back from the run as part of your kind of stretching routine. So these exercises I just need to keep up. Um, you know, it is a weak point. So yes, I am, you know, if I hold my hands up and I'm a bit slack when it comes to, you know, strength, strengthening and stuff like that, I just expect to be able to put my running shoes on and just go for a run. You know, if you're a car and you don't service it regularly, then it's going to break. And that's pretty much like me. And as we get older, obviously that becomes a bit more important. So tomorrow I'm going to be going for a run. He said I can go for a 5k run, uh, nice and easy, um, which is, Fingers crossed, everything goes well, because I've got the Weybridge 10K in two weeks' time. Um, how am I planning to be running that? Well, obviously I can knock on knock on the head. I don't know if that's the same. Um, the sub 38 10K, that was probably never going to be the case anyway, because I think my fitness suggested that with the lack of training since my hamstring injury. So I'm just going to go there, have fun, film, my official PB, because um, we all got our PBs, you know, we've got the official ones that uh, that we do for our clubs or park run that they get put on the power of tennis, 40 minutes, 12 seconds. Yes, I have run a sub 39 in training, but, you know, that's not my official PB. So hopefully I'll be able to get an, an official PB on the course um, and hopefully run a, a 39-ish, um, which would be great, obviously, for my stats. Uh, but I just want to go there with, with kind of no pressure. I think sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to be running at a certain pace. Yes, I will go off at a certain pace and stick to that pace, but if I have to slow down, that's fine. I say it's understandable. So have you had any injuries lately? Um, have you put off going to see a specialist like a chiropractor, you know, a masseuse or whatever, a sports massage? Um, because... I think sometimes we think these things are going to fix themselves. Sometimes they do, but I took last week off from running, then went for a short run on Thursday, and everything just tightened up after about three miles. You know, everything's been more effort, uh, and I just thought that I had a bug, but it's. I think my hamstring has just been tightening up, shortening my stride length, and just making me not as efficient as I, as, as I should be, and obviously working a lot harder. So... Hopefully, fingers crossed, as I say, I'll be running tomorrow, um, you know, firing all cylinders and I can progress and work towards the um, Farnborough Half Marathon, which is on the 23rd of January. So that's the race that I'm going to be training towards, um, going for, a, you know, 125. Um, maybe that might be a bit too much of an ask because I've managed to get the base behind me and I didn't even get a base behind me for, for London, thinking about it, but... Excited move, moving forward, back on YouTube, back making videos and excited to share my journey with you again. So as for always, I will speak to you soon. Onwards and upwards. Cheers.